So let's take nucleotides and build them into something bigger, into nucleic acids. And so we will first look at DNA, um, and we've got some more diagrams um, like the ones we've been seeing. So um, if we were to actually look at this double helix and use x-rays, this is what we would see. We wouldn't see this cool twist, okay? That's been worked out um, using x-rays that look like this. Um, <clears throat> and so we want to focus in on um, some tasks here to start with. We're going to find some bases. And so our bases, these are the base pairs through the middle here. And we could also, I'll work on one side of this um, strand of DNA. Here's a couple of bases, all right? Um, we can also highlight the hydrogen bonds in between the bases. Um, so hydrogen bonds are going to be here and here, and maybe you can find some more down here. Okay, those are my hydrogen bonds. Um, we can also highlight the phosphates. So phosphates, remember, are in the backbone. It goes phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. All right, and I'm leaving you some work to do over here. Um, and then we can find phosphoester and phosphodiester bonds, all right? Phosphoester, we're connecting a phosphate to a sugar. Phosphodiester is gonna be a sugar that's connected out to two phosphates, okay? So here's a phosphate that's connected just to one sugar. This is a phosphoester here. Here is, oh, sorry, no. <laughs> it's connected to two sugars, right? One above it, one below it. And so this is what we would call a phosphodiester the two oranges there. And then up top here, we've got a phosphate that's just connected to one sugar. And so here we have a phosphoester, all right? So those phosphates and sugars, again, alternate, and these phosphoester bonds are what hold these polymers together. And I wanna use that opportunity to go back here, okay? So we have phosphoester bonds holding groups together here. Um, with lipids, we had in some of the molecules ester bonds linking them together. In carbohydrates, we had acetals or glycosidic bonds holding those monomers together. And in proteins, um, we had peptide bonds or amide bonds. Um, holding those amino acids together. So we've got some different functional groups um, holding each of our polymers or types of molecules together. So if I come back here, um, I'm gonna leave the other side of the DNA for you to work on. Um, but final note here, notice the five prime and three prime. So here's five prime is how we read it and three prime. So five prime, if you remember this O, C, and then now it's actually formed a connection to the base, but this would be carbon one, two, three, four, five. So five prime is where there's a free phosphate, okay? Down at the bottom, we have again, one, two, three is our numbering from this O, C, N carbon. And we have a free hydroxyl. And so if we have a free phosphate at that end of the strand, that's the five prime. Um, and then three prime is where there's a free hydroxyl. And you'll notice that our strands of DNA are anti-parallel. So this one's going five to three. This one's gonna go from five to three in the opposite direction. So five to three, or sorry, three to five, I guess we could look at it, and here. So we've got anti-parallel strands as we look at that. Um, a couple other features to think about. Um, this double helix is very stable. So DNA is very stable, makes sense. We don't want our genetic material to just kind of fall apart on us. Um, like we have been seeing, these are built out of nucleotides. And those nucleotides um, contain deoxyribose. Um, they also are connected with those phosphoester bonds. Ester bonds. Um, the base pairs that we're going to see, so we're going to see base pairs and we're going to see A pairs with T and C pairs with G. And those are not bonded together, those are hydrogen bonds, that was what we had seen here, right? Hydrogen bonds holding those bases together. Um, so we've got base pairs and then um, essentially our function 
is to be the instruction manual. So holds lots of info to code proteins. All right, so holds info to code proteins. When we talk about a chromosome, a chromosome is what we kind of saw sketched on some earlier um, pages, and then a gene is going to be just one tiny segment of a chromosome. So when we express a protein, we're just working from one gene, not from the entire um, chromosome. Um, a few other just fun facts if you're into random facts and big numbers, all right? Um, so there are about three billion base pairs in the human genome. Um, there are hundreds or thousands of genes on each little chromosome. Um, there are about 20,000 protein and protein coding genes, and some of this work was done um, like in the 90s and before the 1990s um, through the Human Genome Project. They actually expected at one point to find one gene per protein, but these 20,000 genes actually code for about 100,000 different proteins, it turns out. Um, within these genes, um, it actually, you're going to have an average protein that you're able to code for um, being about 400 amino acids. So um, there's a lot of um, information in the genes that is not directly used in making the protein. Um, and then something just cutting edge, I was just reading an article this week, um, so 2023. Um, there's a new project, you can search this up, human pan genome and if you add the search term nature that's a, a very um, famous scientific journal so human pan genome nature 2023 um, this human genome project was just the genome of one person and that was really like the scientific and computing power we had um, you know 30 years ago um, but the human pan genome is really exciting um, they've got at this point as of today when I'm recording the genomes of 47 people and these 47 people were taken from all around the world and so we've got a much broader diversity than one <laughs> um, and so this is really exciting we're having all kinds of um, different people groups represented and should be a leap forward um, in the rest of our lifetimes to helping understand um, genetics so pretty cool instead of one now we've got 47 people looking at their entire genomes and now we're able to compare contrast learn stuff